time. The Honourable Member for Oxley. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> the government's immigration policy released prior to the last election contained a promise to review the efficiency of immigration decision making. The policy also stated that access to courts for the review of tribunal decisions should be restricted in all but the most exceptional circumstances. In the case of illegal immigration, the government has not only been too lenient but all too willing to squander taxpayers' money and far too slow to deport illegal immigrants. There is no obligation by law to provide both an, an administrative review and a judicial review of applications, so why are you doing it? Why, <clears throat> why are illegal immigrants and criminals getting legal aid to delay their deportation when thousands of Australians are denied this taxpayer-funded privilege? Approximately 60 per cent of administrative cases before the federal court concern immigration matters. In the 1995-96 budget, litigation cost the Immigration Department $7.4 million, and this figure did not include legal aid, court costs, or the excessive costs of housing and feeding illegal immigrants during lengthy and unnecessary legal processes. This is expenditure you cannot reasonably justify and a bill the Australian people don't want. It is an affront to the Australian people that so much time and money is spent expelling from our shores people who in most cases are little more than opportunistic invaders taking advantage of our reputation as a soft touch. The Immigration Minister, Philip Ruddock, hit the nail on the head when he said in March, too many people are using court action to delay departure. This is an urgent matter requiring not just words but action. The Australian people have had enough. As at the 25th of March this year, there were over 600 cases of immigration-related matters before the Federal Court, the Full Court and the High Court. Many of these matters will be withdrawn before the hearing and only about 10 per cent of cases that go before the Court are successful. I repeat, we cannot afford the luxury of providing illegal immigrants those who sneak across our northern borders unlimited legal aid and assistance when our own people go without. In a recent case involving illegal immigrants arriving by boat, our government provided legal aid to these criminals to resist deportation through the federal court, the full bench of the federal court and the high court without success at any stage. What an unwarranted inexcusable and disgraceful waste of the hard-earned money of decent Australians who expect you to be more responsible with their taxes. We have seen people delay their departure while seeking work rights and access to Medicare. What sort of lunacy is this when our unemployment is so high and our hospitals stretch to the limit? Perhaps you would excuse your actions by claiming some relationship with humanitarianism. But this nonsense you pursue is nothing but an international invitation to take the Australian people for a ride. As at February this year, over 300 people in our prisons came within deportation provisions. What are you waiting for? How long do we have to feed these foreign criminals when so many of our own people are hungry and 40,000 young Australians live on the streets? The answer is to tighten up the system immediately, stop all the rorting, stop the waste of our hard-earned taxes and help restore public confidence in government decisions. We should be negotiating treaties with other countries to have these criminals deported and to serve their sentences in their home country instead of in the luxury of Australian prisons where it costs 40000 to 65000 per prisoner per year. You and the governments before you have been extremely successful at signing deals that export Australian jobs. Let's see if you can get it together to export other countries' criminals to their place of origin. The government needs to, to act immediately to stop foreign criminals from entering Australia in the first place and, secondly, to provide a quick and cheap means to deport foreign criminals should they manage to waltz through the gap in your security arrangements. These criminals should not get legal representation unless they pay for it. They should not be treated like well-meaning tourists who have lost their way. They must be treated like the criminals they are. 
It is incumbent on you to ensure that anyone entering Australia is a decent law-abiding person who will in some way benefit those who are already here. If they are not in some way going to benefit Australia and Australians, then we don't want them. Australians are sick of being the world's soft touch. Australians are sick of imported problems, be they crime, disease or aspects of cultural difference that will never be able to accept the Australian way of life. It is not for us to change but for them to assimilate. We don't want Australia to become like the places so many people want to leave. So listen to the people and take heed. Fix these problems now or the people will take your positions and give them to those who truly represent Australia. On many occasions I have been called racist, but for the fact is that I, I am a patriotic Australian that believes in Australia and the Australian people. And because I want to see our unemployment cues dwindle down to what they should be and give Australians their jobs first instead of allowing other people into our shores, onto our shores and come to Australia is just sen senseless and lunatic. People should have a knowledge of knowing how to speak English. They must know how to, to assimilate and they must respect our laws and our flag and what Australia stands for. And we must take heed of what people we are going to allow onto our shores. You do not allow people out here who have diseases. You do not allow people in who have criminal records. You must, we must have people who have something to offer Australia. We do not bring in people who have health problems who are going to make our, put a, such a, a strain on our hospital system when we see our own Australians cannot access our, our hospitals because they are just overflowing. We have a country here that so many people want to come and live in and yet we seem to be bending over backwards to change our ways, our values and what we believe in to, accom to accommodate to these people. And Graham Campbell, the member for Kalgoorlie, was right in what he said. Go and ask some of these other countries their immigration policies and what their beliefs are. And no one seems to tend to point the finger at them and call them a racist. But we respect their views and their cultures and the way that they want to run their countries. And yet because I and many of other Australians have believed in the same rights here for our own country, we are then called racist. Patriotism is something that we are losing in this country. It is not being taught in our schools to our children. We must be proud Australians and we must all be Australians together. And that's why if immigrants come to Australia, they are coming here for a better way of life because why would they leave their own country? And that's why we must all be Australians together. And I was accused of my views by Tim Fisher by affecting trade, and yet Mr Fisher made a statement here in this House just last week saying that trade was up by over $100 billion. So I call on the government, please address the immigration issues into this country, and that people do, who are not and should not have their rightful place in this country should be sent back immediately at no cost to the Australian taxpayer. And if these people can afford to pay for it, then they should be paying their own way back. We have people who are going through the legal system to come here to Australia. And they should be the ones who are, should be considered first and foremost of being allowed into Australia, not those who wish to enter our shores illegally. So on this matter, Mr Speaker, I, um, I believe the government is, is headed in with this bill to actually tighten up in a lot of areas. It is a start. It is not the end, but it is a start, and it's, it's, it is pleasing to see. Thank you. The question is that the bill be read a second time. The other